What's up everybody, my name is Chris and today I want to talk to you about the Zoom H5 and the limiter setting. Specifically comparing whether it makes sense to use that setting in the device or if you also can just limit your stuff afterwards. We are going to compare a good signal with a clipped signal, also a clipped signal with the limiter and without the limiter and also comparing certain solutions that you might want to choose when fixing your signal. And one of them actually sounds surprisingly good, but it also costs a bit of money. Now for myself, the Zoom H5 is a device that I was using for podcast recording mainly. And this is also what I'm going to talk about mostly here. Now I upgraded to the Zoom F6 for exactly that purpose of recording podcasts. And I'm also going to make a similar video about the limiter setting of the Zoom F6. But I also think that it's really important to talk about the H5 because it's widely used and really popular. Now, why would you want to use a limiter? For the most part, when you have a podcast recording setting, each person you are interviewing or yourself have a microphone. Then you have the gain setting, which you can set on the buttons right here, and you can dial those in because you also see the signal strength on the display here. Now, that's all great. However, as a podcast progresses, oftentimes the people get more comfortable and with that, they also start talking louder. And then also people could start laughing within the conversation and that usually brings the signal up to a strength that you didn't anticipate before. Now it's good practice to set your gain level so low that even if you have those moments when everybody gets louder, you still have that in an acceptable range. A dB level that many people shoot for is minus 12 or minus 6 decibels. That's a good range for the normal volume and then you still have good room to the top for moments when it gets louder. Then with that set up, you might want to keep an eye on your recorder to check the levels every now and then and make sure that you still are in that acceptable range. Now, if you don't want to constantly look at your recorder or have a second person that can do that job for you, there are two options for you. One option is upgrading to a device like the Zoom F6, which doesn't necessarily need a gain setting. And you can do a lot of that stuff later because it has the capability of recording everything with dual AD converters and also working with 32-bit float. That's the reason why I recently upgraded. However, the F6 is also a relatively expensive upgrade considering that for the same price as the F6 costs, you would get the Zoom H5 plus two microphones relatively easily. The other solution that does not cost any money is using a limiter. The Zoom H5 limiter is actually something that is not a specific circuit or device inside of there. It is something that is done electronically, which means that the signal gets converted to a digital signal first and then the limiter is applied. That means that the signal is already potentially clipped when it goes through the limiter. And that's exactly the reason why I did not choose to use the Zoom H5 limiter for all my recordings and I usually don't recommend it to others. Because my logic is that it just gives me the cleanest signal, just record that to the SD card and then I can apply any limiter after the fact. This might be different if you have a recorder that has a different limiter setup that is more on the hardware side and not just software. Now I never tested what effect the limiter on the H5 has. So let's jump into some sound samples and see whether or not the internal limiter makes sense or if you should just add your limiter in post-production. Now for the test setup, I was using the Shure Beta 57A, which is also the podcast mic that I use, and I connected it directly via XLR to the Zoom H5. On channel two, I had the limiter set to standard, and you can see on the screen what that actually means in terms of what the limiter does. And on channel one, I did not have the limiter active whatsoever. Now for the first test, I set the gain level on both channels to the same setting, which is a kind of like a normal talking setting, which I would also use for a podcast recording on this device with these specific microphones. And that is to basically know what effect does the limiter have if I already set my gain levels relatively normal and then have that recorded. And here's that snippet. This is a test recording with the Zoom H5 limiter on channel 2 set to general, limiter on channel 1 set to none, and the gain is set to 6 on both devices. 
This is to see what effect the limiter has even if it is not clipping by default if there is any difference between the two audio signals. This is how it sounds with my voice. Now in this test I found that they pretty much sound the same and that is to be expected because the limiter doesn't really do much. However, it does reduce the overall signal strength a little bit because the limiter basically limits everything to minus 6 dB. Now in this next test I set the gain of the channel with the limiter to 10 which basically makes this microphone clip constantly even with normal talking. And that would basically mean that someone just completely wrecked the setting and made a huge mistake when setting everything up. The question here was what effect does it have and how does it compare to a clean signal? This is a test recording of the Zoom H5 with these two microphones. Channel 1 has no limiter engaged, but the gain is set in a position that it should sound normal and not have any clipping. On channel 2, the gain is set to level 10, which basically makes it clip even with my voice just being relatively normal. To demonstrate how this sounds with the limiter set to general on this channel so that it engages and hopefully does not distort the signal. This is a test to see how it sounds. Now in this example you can clearly hear that there is a strong difference in the two signals. The one that is normally recorded with a good gain setting sounds pristine and really nice. That was really good. However, the signal that is clipped just sounds like garbage. It sounds like there was no limiter on it at all, basically. It just is a little less loud. So in that regard, the limiter does its job. It reduces the overall volume of that too loud signal. However, it just doesn't do it before it clips. It clips first and then it gets adjusted by the limiter. So I would say from that point of view, it doesn't sound good for the limiter in the H5. Now I have one more test recording here before we are going to jump into the post-processing and those examples. Now in this test I have set both channels to a level of 10 in terms of gain, so both microphones are constantly clipping. One of the channels has the limiter engaged and the other one does not have the limiter engaged. This one might be a little loud, so please adjust your headphones if you have any on and let's take a listen of how the internal limiter sounds versus a recorded signal without the limiter active. Which is recording on channel 1 and 2. Channel 1 has no limiter engaged whatsoever. Channel 2 has the limiter set to general. That being said, these two microphones are recorded in level gain setting 10, which basically has them way too loud all throughout. So this is a test of how they sound with the limiter engaged on the device without the limiter engaged on the device. Now obviously this sound example is total garbage and you would not want to use this whatsoever. It basically is so broken that you just could scrap the whole recording. And it doesn't really make a difference whether or not the limiter was active or not. They're both terrible. However, what I wanted to demonstrate with this example, specifically with the one that does not have the limiter active, is what can you do with that signal? And that we are going to look into now. There are many ways you can go about this in post-processing. You can use a hard limiter that basically just is the same thing as if you were using the internal one. You can also do dynamics processing, for example in Audition, or you can use a professional tool like Isotope RX-8 declipping. Now here I want to start with a sample of a hard limiter. And this is how it compares to the internal limiter of this device. Which is recording on channel 1 and 2. Channel 1 has no limiter engaged whatsoever. Channel 2 has the limiter set to general. That being said, these two microphones are recorded in level gain setting 10, which basically has them way too loud all throughout. So this is a test of how they sound with the limiter engaged on the device, without the limiter engaged on the device. Now as you can hear, the hard limiter set up with the settings that I have on the screen during the test, it just doesn't do much of a difference. It still sounds very much the same. And that is basically because it doesn't do much aside from trying to pull down everything that is too loud. 
So it might help in making the signal less loud and just pulling it down, but it doesn't really help in terms of the distortion and the crackling sound. Now in this other example, we are going to look into the dynamics processing, which also does something similar. Which is recording on channel 1 and 2. Channel 1 has no limiter engaged whatsoever. Channel 2 has the limiter set to general. That being said, these two microphones are recorded in level gain setting 10, which basically has them way too loud all throughout. So this is a test of how they sound with the limiter engaged on the device, without the limiter engaged on the device. Now in this example, I would say it still has the same problems. It still has the crackling and distortion everywhere and it also adjusts the volume just a little bit down. So it helps in terms of that regard, but it's nowhere near a usable signal. But let's jump into Isotope RX8 and see what the declipping of that tool can provide you. Which is recording on channel 1 and 2. Channel 1 has no limiter engaged whatsoever. Channel 2 has the limiter set to general. That being said, these two microphones are recorded in level gain setting 10, which basically has them way too loud all throughout. So this is a test of how they sound with the limiter engaged on the device, without the limiter engaged on the device. Now I hope that has you surprised just as it has me surprised. It really sounds stunningly good. Obviously, it's not going to sound the same compared to a normal, clean, good recording from the start, but it really sounds usable compared to a signal that was clipped completely beforehand and without a limiter and just too loud at all. Now, this still sounds very much computery and in a way soft and weirdly electronic, but I would say that's much better compared to the distorted and crackling sounds of the broken signal. Now this effect and tool called RX8 and with this effect specifically the D-clip costs quite a bit of money and I'm going to link it down below because it might be your only solution but it might also be interesting to look for an audio engineer that has this suite and could run your file through that for you so that it is declipped and you can use your interview for example because it can be really something to have an interview with a person that you can't really do a new interview with and not be able to use that signal. So if that's the case for you, then this might be a solution. Now for my conclusion, I have two different cases. Case number one is if you want to just have a file ready to go from the device straight away. And in that case, I would say it really makes sense to use the inbuilt limiter still, because you are at least kind of helping yourself with the adjustment of volume in terms of not having those clipped signals straight away. And the limiter helps you just keeping that volume more even. However, if you do post-processing, I would suggest method two, which is to simply set your gain levels correctly. Don't use the limiter of the H5 because it doesn't really have a good enough limiter to begin with and then work with that original recording in the post-processing. If you fear that your sound source is going to be louder than you expect, just set your gain lower than you would expect and with that you give yourself more headroom because it's much easier to make the signal louder and remove a bit of noise maybe instead of having to remove the clipping which is practically impossible aside from tools like RX8 with the D-clip but that again is pretty expensive. Now I hope this information was helpful for you. If it was, please give this video a like and help other people find this type of information as well. It helps out a lot. If you have further questions, please leave those in the comment section down below. I'm happy to answer them there or make a video specifically about it. If you want to have more videos like this in your inbox, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.